jobs at good wages, but who found out upon arrival that the only way to make a living in this industrial city was as a maid, janitor, or boot black. Now, in the last part of the 20th century, Chicago blacks want a bigger piece of the pie. By 1975, the U.S. Census Bureau predicts that 50% of the population will be black. The famous Democratic machine of Cook County is just beginning to feel the political stirring of the dissatisfied. But some observers feel that it will take more than a change in politics to bring economic and political viability to Chicago's blacks. This is Chicago, the Windy City, gem of the Midwest and probably the most racially segregated of the major cities in the United States. In 1833, when the town was incorporated as a village, there were only 200 inhabitants. Today, there are three and one half million Chicagoans and 150,000 businesses in the metropolitan area. But this too is Chicago, and it has a different story to tell. This is where most of the city's one million blacks live. Their homes are far cry from the fancy steel and glass high-rise structures that are becoming the new promised land for the whites and the wealthy. How does local government affect housing for black people in Chicago? I couldn't talk about local government without talking about the federal government. In that the federal programs, umbrella, uh, whatever uh, the local programs are, I mean, I'm speak speaking specifically of HUD uh, and its subsidiary FHA. Has urban renewal been a positive or negative aspect? Uh, in my opinion, it's been a negative aspect in that uh, so many blacks were if they would have did this shit for any other race, they would have took it and ran with it. Niggas is complaining. They, they gave you niggas the world, man. And you couldn't take, they gave you the alley hoop of the century, man. Yo, you got niggas saying, uh, yes. you got niggas blaming like free housing and food on why their community look like dog shit. Like, niggas all they will have to blame do, anything off why they can't get ahead, bro. All they have to do is clean it up, keep it clean, maintain it, and it, it would be good. But they don't want to do it. Yo, why y'all giving us? Why y'all giving us free housing and and welfare? Y'all destroying our families. Like what? Y'all destroyed the black family. With, with, Hi, with, welcome with to West Fifty Seven. I'm Steve Croft. Picture a no man's land with broken windows, dark abandoned buildings, no law and order. There are carefully demarcated areas controlled by rival bands of armed militia fighting over the rubble. Nearly every night there's sniper fire. It sounds like Beirut, but in fact it's America. From some of the most valuable real estate like in our nation's life. third largest city. What's the neighborhood like? Like a bad neighborhood. Dangerous? Yes. Can you tell when somebody's going to shoot? Yes. They just grab the gun, just start shooting. One time they came over this way, and then they saw this lady, and they, she said something to her. To them, and then they had, she a had haircut. a big hole in her head when they killed her. They shot her. I don't know what they did. Did you see her? Yes. How often do you hear gunshots? Um, too often. Johnny Shannon is 10 years old. He lives within walking distance of Chicago's Gold Coast, but it's several worlds away. His home is Cabrini Green, a name at once both saintly and sylvan. It is neither. When I first came here, it reminded me of Vietnam. It's been called a city within a city, the most notorious public housing project in America. Dennis Davis patrols it for the Chicago police. Drive straight through. Built in the 40s and 50s, it was supposed to provide safe, inexpensive, integrated housing for people trying to save money to buy a house. Today... It's 70 acres of no man's land, void of legitimate enterprise, with its own laws and its own language. Oh, no, the Rock. The Rock? Yeah. 
if you ask niggas on YouTube, they built these these houses specifically to 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 trap black people in so they can be violent and 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 destroy the black family, bro. Well, well, hang on. It worked though. It worked though. I mean, like Cabrini Green is uh, legendary for drug trafficking, you know, because but, of the tactical uh, disadvantages to law enforcement. I'm saying they. I'm not. I never mind. Yeah, they, they, they trying to. That's what's up, Mac Knight. What's going on, man? I'm telling, bro, bro. I'm about to be free, man. I'm going back to Alabama. Um, I can tell y'all about myself now because you know I'm getting out, man. Um, you know I was a Norfolk police uh, officer. I was a NCIS guy in the Navy, man. I'm about to be. I got my freedom papers. Oh, you got discharged? August the fourth, baby. Hell yeah. Wow. So you was a yeah. police officer all that time. Okay. I thought you was a you had us thinking you was a gun uh training, a gun. <laughs> no, no, no. I did that on the side, man. I uh okay. yeah, I did that on the side, man. I was a, a firearms instructor on the side, bro. Um I was a Navy instructor. Reserve. Yeah, man, I'm about to be out though. So uh yeah, man. You going uh, back to being a police officer? Fuck no. Fuck no, hell no. Nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> he is so that quick. Yeah, man. I feel so, it, man. So, you, so, you, you, so, go ahead. Um, uh, uh, so, Mac Knight, why do you think niggas uh, uh, shoot, kill the most people, perform the lowest academically, have the most broken homes? Like, why? You, what you think that is, bro? I'm sorry, brother. What did you say again? So, why do you think that black people are the dumbest at school, kill the most people, have the most broken homes, bro? What do you what do you think the main factor in that is? I had hope, man, until I uh, got on this channel, man. But it's his fucking DNA, bro. All right, all right, all right, yeah, you, cool, all right. you cool with me, bro? I, I, I'm I'm rocking with you, God. <laughs> oh man, wow! I don't like how y'all treated that uh, white boy from. Um, uh, VA though, man. Oh. Fucking facts, man. Y'all should have um, hit him up about those. Oh, uh, who, who, that, that guy, um, that guy, um, he was talking. What was his name again? Mike. Uh, I, like Mike, Mike, or Mike. Shit. Mike. Yeah. yeah, man, he yeah, lucky, man. man. We'll call fish on his ass. He lucky. Y'all should have pressed him, man. Like, ask him uh, what happened to Lynn Haven Mall. Ask him what happened to Military Circle Mall. <laughs> ask we him did what though. To, did you? We did press him. He just he was talking liberal shit. I, I think that 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 guy he yeah, he was super liberal. There was no, there was really you know, like he. I think you got to remember, Matt. He he didn't. He was just cruising YouTube, the live. You know how when you press live on YouTube and you can see who's live, and he just stumbled upon this channel. That was his. This that was his first time seeing this channel. Yeah, and, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Content before. And I and I'm black, so automatically, bro, black people never talk shit about other black people. And if they do, it's only like some real shallow yeah, shit, like hip hop shit type shit. Like that. yeah, it's not really anything of substance. So he probably was like, "Whoa, what the fuck? This nigga talking about DNA and." And it's intrinsic to niggas, and that shit probably threw him up. And yeah, yeah, let's be right, honest, bro. Right. And let's be honest, bro. He's he a mud shark, bro. He got a mulatto kid, so you know he 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 down with the brown, bro. And, he, and it, it's funny. I, he was trying to tell I the part of Queens he's from was cool. <laughs> I got cousins over there in that part of Queens. He knew a lot about Hampton Roads, though, man. Like, um, real talk. Uh, Chesapeake's the only place, real talk, that you can actually, you know, get away from some people. And you know what? One thing I will say about um, Tidewater, they don't call it Tidewater no more? Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, okay. Because when I was down in Virginia, they called it Tidewater. Um, but, but, one thing about um, um, that area, man, they got some fine ass black women, man. It's like the opposite of Philly. Am I lying, Mac Knight? 
no, no, sir, you're not lying. <laughs> you ain't it's lying. like it, it's the opposite of Philly. It's like literally in, in Richmond is much different. Like Richmond is a mixed bag. Like Richmond is like Philly ish, but like once you go to Tidewater, man, it's like something in the water down. You got a lot of military chicks there, though. You got a lot of military chicks there. Got a lot of military chicks there, no, bro. No, but I'm talking about the girls. The girls that went to VCU that were from that area, all of them was bad. You knew they was from Tidewater just from looking at it. You would be like, "You from Tidewater, right?" They'd be like, "Yeah, I'm from uh, North. I'm from I'm from Portsmouth. I'm from North." Like they, they just had a look. They were cleaner, man. Something was it just was different. And the dudes, it was a mixed bag with the dudes. Dudes wasn't busted or nothing like that, but. As far as the girls, you could just uh, tell. It's like pause. PG County. It's like, it's like no, no, no. Pause. You know what he mean. That, like, when, when, you yeah, know what he mean. Yeah, pause. No, nah, facts. Pause. But but when I see when I say the dudes, I'm talking about like <laughs> dressing, like you know, like how dudes be fresh, like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that. Not they like still that. dress in country. Yeah, yeah, they still they dress in country. Yeah. yeah, they could. They could be a mixed bag. But the girl, like when you in DC, you could tell a chick from PG County. If you're from DC, you could tell. That's how it is in Virginia. You could tell a girl from Tidewater. You're not, um, wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me um let me move along. The rock. What do you call it? The rock. It's like the rock of Gibraltar. You know, it's it's there, you can't get to it, and it's the strongest thing in Cabrini. There's normally a sentry. He's standing right there in front of eleven fifty now. What's he looking for? Police. They're selling drugs from the lobby. He will see us when we make the turn. And if they're dealing, he'll just walk away into the building. And once they get into the building, that's it. We won't find them. Cabrini is part of the worst public housing system in the country. People so bad there. that two years ago, the federal government threatened to take it over. The Chicago Housing Authority doesn't even know who lives in its buildings. Boy, Patrick Beverly. 100,000 people are waiting to get in. The only structure is provided by the gangs who marked their turf with spray paint and set up sniper posts in high-rise buildings. The working poor Cabrini was designed for have long since fled, leaving the desperate alongside the helpless. And I don't give a damn how hard you try to teach your kids to walk a straight line. The kids. So game fingers are the role model for these children in this neighborhood. 60% of the households here are headed by single women. Patricia Welch is one of them, trying to raise three boys. 60? That ain't bad. <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, no, fuck, no, fuck that. 75 at least. Yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah, they got to be wrong about that number. They can't, they got to, um, they probably, that's probably the, uh, they probably did a survey or something and self, self-reported that shit. Two-thirds of Cabrini's residents are children. It was What's it literally like a fortress. Hey, Yo, two thirds. It was literally of a fortress. This is crazy. Women and kids. That reminds Women. me of Africa. It's just a whole bunch of niggas fucking dog. Cabrini yeah, Green. Kids. Cabrini yeah. Green was literally a fortress. It's it's um, we talk about O Block right now, right? But oh my God, Cabrini Green. It was a fortress. Like police could not get in there and get out. Um. I had studies on this in college. Like they had sniper posts, they had um, ECPs. It was militant. Yeah, this is this is um, this this is the real people. This is these are the people that actually lived it, man. Ten of the households here are headed by single women. Patricia Welch is one of them, trying to raise three boys. Two thirds of Cabrini's residents are children. What's it like living here? Hell. Why hell? Because you don't know if a bullet going to come through your window. You don't know why you're going to the store, if you're going to be shot at, or your children be hurt in any kind of way. When was the last time they were shooting? Oh, yes, I it. Well, my building last night. Do you think your mother worries about you living here? Yes. Why? Because um, when you go outside, the bad, bad things happen out there. What's the closest you ever come to getting hurt by the gangbangers? Well, one time I was playing in the playground 
They just start shooting back and forth. What do you do when you hear shooting? I run. We're in a battle. Uh, we're in a battle with the gangs for those youngsters. Bob Martin heads the Chicago Intervention Network, a city agency that works with gangs. We have what we call um, marginal youth, or what some gang members call trophies. Why trophies? Uh, they are children that are born out of wedlock, that um, the fathers oftentimes brag about how many uh, youngsters they have, uh, how many sons they have. And uh, the code word for son is trophy. That is the next wave of gang. Wow. Some man was bragging about the kids they had. Called them trophies. No, nah, fuck that guy. It. Fuck that guy. He ain't doing shit to help. I mean, it's son man, bro. What can he do, though? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's just sick. What can he do, man? They just out here fucking and having babies, and, and I got 10 kids, man. And just, yeah, you're not taking I, care of me. I know this guy. When you I hear know gang members guy. say you'll never stop the gangs. Uh, you can't stop us. We are a nation. That's what they're referring to. When you think of Cabrini, you can look right out my window and see it. It's only six blocks, but it's a cancer that can spread into every neighborhood in the city of Chicago. Cabrini first gained notoriety in 1981, when then Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne briefly took an apartment there. I'm going man, straight to man, the man. in the city, because by allowing it, we can harm the whole city, and I'm not going to have it. By most accounts, Byrne spent one or two days a week there for six months, and then Cabrini once again fell into neglect. Today, the housing authority is $30 million in debt. The building codes are not being enforced, and the elevators, when they work, are called the most dangerous form of public transportation in Chicago. Jesus! Do the they control the elevators? Like yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they can control them. At one time, they, uh, as a matter of fact, they were hiding, they were hiding up here. And if a young lady got on the elevator, she would jump down and, you know, do what she wanted to do to her. They used to hide guns up there. This is uh, 11. This 11? Right. Okay. On it's pretty dark down. out there. Yeah. yeah. You see, that's another thing about these elevators. Because you never know what's what's going to happen when the door opens. Just watch, watch my back. Where'd he get shot? Boy, he probably got shot somewhere around here. Last year, 200 people were shot or stabbed in Cabrini. Eight violent crimes for every 100 people. How long ago did he get shot? Uh, just a, a real short time ago, he was shot by some fellows across the way here as they crossed the field. Did you know this kid? Oh, yeah. About four years. In five years, Brother Bill Tomes has That's seen 65 of his uh, friends shot or stabbed. He's an emissary from the Archbishop of Chicago, a peacekeeping. You got this white dude walking through the robe and shit. Damn, gliders are fucking bold for this <laughs> Oh, this yeah. shit looks like a complete no, fucking death trip, bro. It's like fucking Walking Dead. Yeah, man. These people, and this was not that long ago, 89? The force of one who roams Cabrini at night, helping women and children negotiate the free fire zones. Are you trying to save souls here? No, we're trying to uh, show God's love for people. You're trying to keep people alive. Oh, I think we're trying to keep people alive. Yeah. Those are pretty low expectations. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> keep somebody alive. Y'all be cool, man. Y'all be I, chill. I, most of the kids, for example, have been shot. Almost all of them have been shot. Right? Yeah. It's my brother. They killed yeah, Most of the kids, all of them have been shot. That's crazy. My brother. Is kid. violent, uh, sudden violent death yeah. just sort of accepted here? Something that happens? Well, yeah. it's expected to happen in this kind of. Hey, bro. Um, like a lot of those kids and teens in Chicago, they have more combat experience than most of uh, the military and the yeah. police departments across the country. Oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt, they've been in shootouts, broad daylight, with big shit too, like big shit and handguns. Oh. Yeah, and they've hunted. They've gone on missions too, like those missions where they ride around looking for people to get. Looking they, for the um, ops. 
Yeah, that's um those are um tactical missions. Those are those those that's 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 um there's a lot of um experience experience beats training every every time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. That's why um a lot of people don't understand like when you run ac- across one of these teams, man, um the reason you can't compete is because like, say you're a concealed carry holder, right? And you're a citizen. You're like, I've got my concealed carry. Um, I'm not taking any shit from some. Yeah, but will you whip out in broad daylight and just start yamming at that team? Because he will do that to you. He'll whip out anywhere and start bombing at your ass. He don't care who's around. He don't care who's in between y'all two. He's going to whip out and start shooting. You're not going to do that. You're a regular citizen. You waiting you're waiting. Absolutely right. Yeah. Unless he misses, you know, um, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. man. You're, you're a responsible gun owner, bro. That nigga is just a savage, bro. It's too different. Yeah. And as a yeah. as a responsible gun owner, you're you're worried about you know shot placement, yeah. um, collateral damage. He's not. He does not give a fuck. Not a flying fuck. And also. He's been to juvenile hall, prison, jail, whatever, and that world doesn't scare him. You don't want to go to prison. You don't want to go to jail. You want to avoid those things. That's a deterrent for you. Prison, jail is a deterrent for you. That means absolutely nothing for him. No, to them, that's a trophy. Exactly. A badge of honor. Yikes. So yeah, it's it's like it's like they that you can't compete with them on so many levels on the street, man. That's why all that concealed carry stuff and yada yada yada. Um, it doesn't. I I, I laugh at that, man. Because yeah, okay, it's, you got to concealed carry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's easy to just say, yeah, man. You know, you just go in these neighborhoods and if one of these sun men just act up, you know, you just go. You just let that shit fly, but it's just it's not that simple, bro. I'm a son man, man. Fuck it. I'm I'm gonna crash out. <laughs> no, I mean yeah. you can, but that's not they they act like that's a, a solution. That's not a solution, bro. No, no, I, I agree, man. I'm just I'm a son man, bro. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Like like the solution to this shit isn't getting in fucking Mexican standoffs with with these goddamn barbarians, oh, bro. Geez. Yeah. Environment, and you never know when it's going to. It could be right now. In fact, it was 15 minutes later. Brother Bill and the paramedics were called to attend to a stabbing victim. But they failed to achieve their modest goal. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's like a skit off a of living color, man. I she rebuke like you in the name of Jesus. She right, looked like the facts. rebuke lady, man. Facts, she rebuking you, man. She got a pot of um, a pot of spaghetti water on right now, man. Yeah, man. I want to know. I want to know. Her son died in the elevator. Ah. Who controls this area? This is the police control? Yeah, we control it. Yes. You're serious? I'm serious. I believe the gangs are in control of Cabrini. And anytime uh, they nickname uh, the uh, plaza area as a, a shooting gallery, then I don't think the police or CHA management is in control of the property. That assessment comes not from some alderman or candidate running for local office, but from the latest director of the Chicago Housing Authority, Vincent Lane. 
we've talked to residents at different housing projects in Chicago who describe uh, the buildings they live in or the projects that they live in as uh, the graveyard, the DMZ, uh, death row, Beirut. That's right. Accurate descriptions? Accurate descriptions. Uh, with the one exception today, and that's at a, a building, uh, 2417 West Adams. When I got in here, I was so thrilled about the apartment. Two bathrooms, four big bedrooms, roomy. I could fix it up like a home, you know. When Evelyn Walker first moved to 2417 West Adams, she thought she'd died and gone to heaven. But that was before she found out it was called the graveyard, and with good reason. And I mean, a lot of bullets come in. I'm not man, talking about man, one man. or two bullets. It was attacked from every angle. One day it might be the back. Next day it might be the front. Sometimes it'd be from back and front. What did you do to try and protect yourself? Well, we stopped eating at the dining room table for one thing. Uh, we got a big closet in the back. We stayed in that closet basically when uh, shooting would occur. My children were actually trained like maybe men would be in the service to take cover, uh, hit the flow. I just came over. That was before Vince Lane and the Chicago Housing Authority announced a plan to take the projects back from the gangs with police sweeps, security gates, and ID checks. The first step was to get rid of the squatters. Federal agents and Chicago police forcibly removed anyone who wasn't on the housing authority's list. Who's Deion Wilson? That's me. I'm Who's talking. Calvin Gibson? That's me. Do you want to go check the school? It's really no different than uh, when uh, you and I were in school, where uh, two or three bullies controlled the whole cl classroom. I proposed to turn that around. I want to give the residents the support so that they can throw hey, the bullies out. Bullshit. Bullshit. There's pretty people all over the building now. Well, that's for now. Yo, yo, yo. So they constructed this um, building, Cabrini Green, like I think three or four buildings with one or two accesses um, from the ground floor, elevators, um, tall buildings. They literally built a fortress to keep law enforcement out. They didn't know that though. They didn't. They, they didn't know they was that it was going to be used for that though. Are you Mac? Are you saying they built this so that these sun people could terrorize each other without any uh, police intervention? Yes, sir. I did. Yes, sir. I'm saying that. And, and what what would be the point of them doing that? Like, what, what's the grand plan? Well, the grand plan um, is, um, well, it's HUD, right? HUD, um, Housing uh, Urban Development, right? Um, they build buildings and low-income housing to get people in there. And then when it goes to shit, they demolish it and sell it to people um, for lower prices. Cabrini Green is no longer there. But why do you have to do all that? That seems like a lot to do. Because you can't kill niggas. Like you can't you can't kill niggas. What? What? But why does glider areas do it? Lower income and nothing happens like that. Um, because uh, in glider areas, you just have to 